This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Roden C141 Starlifter, Zvezda's Gaz 233014, and Airfix's Meteor and some details to go with it. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown, the twice monthly show where Aaron Skinner and I have some fun showing you the latest modeling goodness. Yeah, indeed. We start this show with a kit that has been near the top of FSN's most wanted survey several times and that is a Lockheed Starlifter in 1 to 144 scale. This is the C-141 from Roden. Uh, the kit represents the stretched B model of the U.S. Air Force's cargo hauler. The Starlifter entered service in, the 19, in 1965, the mid-1960s, and most of the 285 built were modified with a 23-foot, 4-inch fuselage extension in the late 1970s and early 80s. C-17s replaced them in the mid-2000s. Now, there have been C-141 kits before, notably Aurora's 1 to 108th scale A model, A's and B's in 200th scale from Dragon, Anagrams had a couple of resin kits in 172nd and 1 to 144 scale, and there have been a couple of vacuum-formed kits. Let's see what Roden's kit looks like. Like most of Roden's small-scale aircraft, this looks like a simple, straightforward build. There aren't a lot of parts. The fuselage halves are molded in thick, sturdy plastic, which should minimize warping and flexing in the body. Outside, the body is marked with extremely fine recessed panel lines, hatches, and vents. None of the doors, including the rear loading ramp, can be posed open. The only glitch I see here is that the rear emergency hatches are too high on the fuselage. The window should be about in line with the window on the paratroop door. Filling the window, drilling a new one in the proper location, and placing the door decal around it will fix the problem in a snap. The windshield incorporates part of the fuselage, so it should be easy to fit. Distinctive frames should aid masking. Like the fuselage, the wings show fine panel lines and control surface outlines. Be careful of the tiny fuel jettison pipes molded on the upper wings. They're easy to snap off. The plastic is soft and several corners were bent in the review sample, but they're easily reshaped. Four identical sprues provide the engines and main wheels. The latter feature petite hub details. The engine halves sandwich one-piece exhausts and are capped by one-piece intakes. Unfortunately, the front molding looks like a fan rather than stationary guide vanes. Two sprues supply horizontal stabilizers, main gear doors and legs, and nose wheels. There's also the upper gear doors for the top of the sponsons. The last parts are the nose gear leg, the inside of the main wells, and the probe for the top of the vertical stabilizer. Decals provide markings for a low-vis C-141B from the 452nd Air Mobility Wing, now on display at the March Field Air Museum in California. Now, I talked to FSM reviewer John Hergenrother recently. He's just finishing up a Roden Starlifter, and he said he encountered no fit issues. This is a welcome kit. Maybe Roden will follow it up with a C-141A. Yeah, perhaps. And uh, maybe a C-5 while they're at it? Next, we have Zvezda's 135th scale Gaz 233014 Tiger, the four-wheel drive infantry mobility vehicle used by the Russian Army since 2006. It's similar to a Humvee, but bigger. Capable of carrying as many as 11 people, depending on the version, it's been seen in Crimea and Syria. This is the third 135th scale Tiger we've seen in the last couple of years, but the first from a Russian manufacturer. The others are from Exact and Meng. All have different approaches to part breakdown and construction. Let's see how Zvezda does it. As with the others, there's a pretty complete interior, including a dash with pedals, molded dials and controls, and a separate steering wheel and grab handle. Decals provide instrument faces. The multi-part front seats include supporting frames. Simpler crew seats in the back are molded as one part, but separate brackets anchor them to the floor. The floor doubles as the belly of the Tiger and incorporates part of the transmission and transfer case. Other cabin details include the raised platform for the gunner, fire extinguisher, and racks and racks of ammunition. There's even detail on the ceiling, including lights and handles. Clear parts also provide head and spotlight lenses, the windshield, and cabin windows. The separate roof, hood, rear panel, and sides show crisp hatch outlines and hinges. The nose is also separate, backed by a louvered face for the radiator. Fine plastic mesh is provided for the grill. A large front bumper with sharp non-skid plate molded on and a winch is provided along with a one-piece guard. The rear doors are posable, but not the front ones. All feature interior panels, handles, and more. The vehicle's frame features bash plates, bumpers, and the lower arms of the double wishbone suspension. The upper arms attach to the body via brackets molded with the differentials and drive shafts. Axles connect to final drives. The steering is posable. Solid vinyl tires with shallow but defined tread mount on two-part hubs with well-defined bolts. 
The line for the central inflation system is even molded on. The rooftop weapon station rotates and the folding hatch can be posed open or closed. Armament for the position includes a PKP machine gun and an AGS-17 grenade launcher. Beyond minor flash, the kit's moldings are clean and the sprue attachment points small. The cleanly printed decals provide three marking options as well as extra numbers. Disappointingly, the call-out options are pretty plain. Overall dark green. Internet photos show many in three-color camo. Reflective stickers supply faces for the wing mirrors. A first-rate kit from Zvezda that should be a straightforward build. We'll be right back after this message to look at Airfix's Meteor. Every day, FSM is on a mission to rescue kits that are being neglected. We're on the ground today to rescue hundreds of unopened and partially built kits. The conditions we're finding are deplorable. It makes me sad to see so many models kept in tiny boxes. Countless kits will spend their entire lives in despair, starved of glue, paint, and weathering. We're seeing overcrowding. Sometimes hundreds of kits are crammed onto the same shelf or in a tiny closet. It is unacceptable to me that models are treated this way. Join FSM as we work to alleviate the situation. Please visit us at www.finescale.com or call the number on your screen. For just $39.95 a year, less than 11 cents a day, you can get the information you need to rescue kits from dark places and bring them to life as scale replicas. Here's a kit I was so excited to see, I went out and bought one for myself, Airfix's 148 scale Gloucester Meteor. Britain's first operational jet fighter, the early version saw service in the last years of World War II. Yeah, to me it kitted those wartime variants about 20 years ago. This kit represents the post-war F-8 version with a longer fuselage and redesigned tail. Which, best I can remember, has only been kitted in 48 scale by classic airframes. Leave it to Airfix to do a new kit to go alongside its Sea Venom and, um, oh, what's the other one? The Javelin. Oh, the Javelin. And do it well. The plastic parts show everything I like about the British manufacturer's kits, starting with terrific surface detail. Sharp recessed panel lines, rivets, and fasteners mark the fuselage halves. The wings show the same level of quality. And there are raised rivets in some places too, such as wing root fillets and control surfaces. Nice attention to detail, Airfix. Inside is where the kit truly shines. Controls, panels, wiring, and rivets mark the cockpit walls. Those mate with a floor, turtle deck, joystick, and an ejection seat. Optional cushions with and without molded harnesses are provided. Check out the instrument panel. Cannon bays attached to the sides of the cockpit tub. The weapons feature separate ammunition cans and spent cartridge chutes. There's a ton of detail in the wheel wells, front and back. A super feature is two detailed Rolls-Royce Derwent 8 engines, including starter motors, vacuum pumps, and generators, compressors, combustion chambers, and plumbing. The upper hatches can be left open to display the power plants, or you can pose one on the engine trolley supplied. Optional smaller cutback larger intakes are provided, and there are long exhausts with detail inside. Except for the flaps, the control surfaces are separate, which provides more display opportunities. That includes the speed brakes over and under the wings. A conformal belly tank as well as underwing drop tanks can be hung on the Meteor. Sharp clear parts provide separate windshield and canopy, gun sight, and some lights. Unused clear parts point at possible other versions to come. They include an early canopy, camera windows for a recon bird, and, just to please Aaron I'm sure, an RAAF ADF beacon. Cartograph decals provide markings for two RAF Meteors. One camouflage over high speed silver with yellow tail, the other overall silver. Guess I'll have to get Aussie markings someplace else. You're in luck. Extra Decal has you covered with its Gloucester Meteor Collection Part 1 with two Australian fighters in Korea. You little beauty. In addition, the sheet includes markings for four British jets and one each from Syria and Belgium. Don't see anything you like there? Check out Part 2, which offers seven more F-8s, all Royal Air Force. As with all Extra Decal sheets, the documentation includes color notes and information you need to know to build the plane. If you want more detail than comes in the kit, Edward's got you covered. There's photo etch for the interior, including pre-painted instrument panels, harnesses, seat details, and replacement cannon bay doors. 
engine parts with accurate hatches and a few more bits and bobs. The main gear bays and speed brakes get a boost too, with new walls and interior door panels. You can take the landing gear itself up a notch with wheels from the Brassen line. In addition to sharply cast wheels and tires, the set provides thin covers and masks for the hubs. Finally, Edward offers help for modelers keen to show the flaps deployed. A set of PE flaps including internal structure for the flap and wing. Wow, there's really not much more I could want for my Meteor. I have to get cracking this weekend. Look for a review of the C141 and maybe a build of the Meteor in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the November issue on sale October 6th. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Romancing the Stone.